to the hour of inspiration and encouragement. I'm your host, Bani Malenga. Today, I'm coming to you uh, with a subject I've entitled, The Power of Brokenness. The Power of Brokenness. And I want us to uh, read our text for today from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 to 11. And I'm reading from the King James Version, and the Bible reads, But we have this treasure in earthen verses, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. May the Lord God Almighty bless the reading of his word. Brethren, I want you to understand today that there is power in brokenness. Power is what they imply to be dynamis. In brokenness, there is a residue of dynamis, power, dynamite, that can cause a man to be able to do exploits to be able to do things that he's never been able to do in his life. Brokenness is essential. Is essential to our usability of God. God always uses the broken men and women of this world. In the scriptures, we understand that all the men that God used were broken at some point broken to the extent that God was able to remain God in their lives and nothing of themselves was able to come out of their lives. When it comes to a life of a minister, brokenness is essential. Any minister that has not been broken cannot be able to see the manifestation of the life of Jesus in their lives. Every time a man is not broken, they remain at the same place. They don't make progress. They don't move forward. Sometimes we run away from a life of brokenness because we don't understand the power that resides in brokenness. I want you to know today that the extent to which you are broken is the extent to which God will use you. The extent to which you are broken is the very extent to which God can use you. God can never and never use anybody that has not been broken. Because God, in his way of doing things, he wants to use a man and a woman who is broken. The text we have read today is a text written by the Apostle Paul. And he says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. In other words, there is always treasure in every earthen vessel. As I speak to you, I'm speaking to you as an earthen vessel who has a resident and a residence of treasure in their lives. And that treasure cannot come out until you are broken. Now let's define the word brokenness. I want to define it this way, if you may allow me. Uh, brokenness to me, in the positive sense, in the spiritual, it is the condition of being completely subdued and humbled before the Lord. And as a result, one becomes completely yielded to and dependent upon God. I will repeat that. Brokenness in a spiritual positive sense, 
is the condition of being completely subdued, 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 and humbled before the Lord. And as a result, one becomes completely yielded and dependent on God. The Bible declares in Psalm chapter 34 verse 18 that the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. In other words, God is closer to them that have a broken heart. Closer to them that have a broken heart. A broken heart is a heart of repentance. A heart that is able to examine itself, search itself in the sight and light of God. The scripture further says in chapter 51 of Psalms and verse 17 that the sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Why am I bringing all these passages of scripture? Basically, it's because I want you to understand that there is power in brokenness. There is power in brokenness. If you want to get treasure out of anything that you have before you, you may have to extract it either by force or you may have to extract it by removing the, the cover that is outside. Now Paul says we have this treasure in earthen verses. Treasure is put in earthen verses, meaning that it is put and kept in bodies that are mortal bodies, bodies that can perish and rot at a given time. Now, when he says that, he also mentions that the reason for having treasure in earthen vessels is that the, the earthen vessel may not glory in itself. So that when something big has happened in your life, it is not about you. It is about the excellence of the power of God being witnessed and exhibited in your life. This is very important, brethren. That's why Paul says, if truly we have this treasure in our earthen vessels, no wonder we are troubled on every side. We look this side, it's discomfort. We look this side, it is pain. We look this side, it is hurt. We look this side, it's frustration. So Paul says, we are troubled on every side. Why? Because the earthen vessel must be put in a place of being broken in order that that which is inside the broken the, the vessel may come out and that God may be glorified. Our bodies will never at all glorify God in any way. Because they are to perish. They are not eternal. What is eternal is inside us. Therefore, the treasure in us is what is more important to God. No wonder sometimes I, I wonder why we have to go through so many weeping, so much weeping, so much frustration, so much disappointment, so much hurt. And we ask ourselves, why, Lord? Now when I read this text, I begin to understand that God would rather preserve your, your, your inner man, your treasure in you, than the body. And the Bible says in chapter 1 of the book of Job, that Job was afflicted. He lost everything, including his own children, according to the scriptures. And then he also lost his health. And that health was tempered with so badly that he had boils all over his head. May I submit to you that God had mentioned categorically that there is no need for the devil to touch the soul of Job. Because in the soul of Job, there was treasure that could stand as a testimony of the greatness of God. Of that God can cause men to survive circumstances that are beyond their, ab their ability to survive. And when it was the right time, he was healed of that disease. He was restored back all that which he had lost, even the children. The Bible says he had twice what he lost. 
May God help you in your time of brokenness. That you understand that your brokenness determines your usefulness to the kingdom of God. We are never broken for ourselves. We are broken for others. We are never broken for ourselves. We are broken for others. Our pain is for somebody else. Our pain is for somebody else. It is not for me because I am just a target that God would use, that the devil would attack in order that God may be glorified. So, brethren, I would submit to you that brokenness is necessary for fruitiveness in life. If you are never broken, then you can never be fruitful in your life. Until the physical man is broken, the inner man cannot be revealed. The life of Christ cannot be revealed. And that's why the extent to which your outer man is broken is the very extent to which your inner man can be used. So brothers and sisters, I want you to know today that do not despair. Do not lose heart when you go through moments of brokenness. When you go through times of brokenness, it is basically that you are being prepared for a season where you will be able to help so many and make many lives come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You are being prepared as an example of how God can save men from, from various and diverse trials of life. Remember, Paul says we are troubled on every side, yet we are not distressed. In other words, we keep going, we keep moving, we keep trying, we keep rising up, we keep rising back up and again and again. Why? It is because we know that the target of the enemy is basically to hinder us from being able to work according to that which God has deposited in our lives. Paul says, we are perplexed, but not in despair. He continues to say, we are persecuted. In other words, we are misunderstood. We are misrepresented. People call us names. We are accused of so many things. But at the end of the day, the truth is, it is not necessarily that you are the target. The target is what you carry in your life. That's what the devil wants to take away so that God up in heaven can look like he never works and saves his own. I encourage you today that you have to rise back up again. Regardless of how much loss you have experienced in life. Regardless of how much pain you have experienced in life. Regardless of your sickness. I came today to call you out of that sickness. To call you out of that disappointment. To call you out of that frustration. I came to call you out of that sick bed. Because the Lord God Almighty has positioned me in this season for the sake of you if you've been let down once if you've been betrayed by you know friends or even your family members remember the lord god almighty has permitted that for the sake of something being taken out of you that you become emptied and become that which god can use the bible says we are persecuted but not forsaken we are cast down but not destroyed God would never allow any man or woman whom he has marked for greatness, like you listening to me today, to die without fulfilling their mission. In my life, I've seen pain, I've seen loss, I've seen suffering, I've experienced the worst in my life, but I've chosen to get back up again because I know my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond that which we can be able to ask or even think of. If he did it in the Old Testament, he can do it today. If he did it in the New Testament, he can do it today. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the power of brokenness in, is, is in you 
understanding that when you are broken, you are not finished. When you are broken, you have not lost it all. When you are broken, God has not abandoned you. When you are broken, it's not the end of the road. When you are broken, you can rise back up. And that is a personal decision. Never to allow the enemy or circumstances to rule and dominate your mind and your thinking and your life and your situation that everything now is dictated by what they did to you. Is dictated by what they said. Is dictated by what is happening in your pain. No, no, child of God. That's not how life is supposed to be. I have seen it and I've survived it. And I'm here to encourage you in this moment of inspiration and encouragement. I am a living testimony of surviving pain, surviving loss, surviving circumstances of suffering. I am a living testimony. As you continue to listen to my preachings, you will hear testimonies of what has happened in my life. The things that have happened, the actions accidents the devil has brought into my life and I've survived all of them. One of them was in Oklahoma where I survived an accident where you know the car had to turn upside down three to four times and I survived and came out with no pain and no scratch on my body. May God be glorified for doing such wonders. And I believe at the sound of my voice as you listen to me, God will do the same that which he has done to me. He will do for you exactly that which he has done for me. Isaiah 57 verse 15 says this. For that says the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite or and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. I love this scripture. I love this text. Isaiah's writings are very inspiring. This is a text that makes me realize that even when I am broken, I still can get back up and be able to face the enemy head on. Why? Because even when the devil throws the worst of his punch, I will still rise up again because my God is able. The Bible says a righteous man may fall seven times, but still rise up again. The Bible, I will read again in Isaiah 57 verse 15. For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabiteth uh, eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contract and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. May your spirit be revived. May your heart be revived. Because God is able to do just that. The Lord loves the broken in heart. Listen to this, brethren. Yielding to, break, to the breaking process is easier than God forcing it on you. Many people are too full of themselves. They think they are more important than even God himself. And every time we come to God in that manner, God will make sure he alters certain things. He will make sure he removes that pomp and pride out of our lives. Listen to this in Matthew 21 verse 44. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whosoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. I'll repeat the reading of the text. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whosoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. In other words, yielding to the breaking process is easier than God forcing it on you. In other words, whosoever shall fall on this stone, the rock Jesus Christ, you decisively come to him and fall before him. You will be broken, but there is a difference. You still come back up again. But on whosoever the stone falls on will be grinded like powder. My brother, my sister, I should not wait for God to come down 
and grind me. I would rather be able to come before God myself. So then, by the, it's very important to understand that God breaks us in order to remake us into what he wants. God breaks us in order to remake us into what he wants. Isaiah 64 verse 8, But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, thou art the porter, and we all are the work of thy hand. Isaiah makes a proclamation. He says, you are our father, and we are just clay. We are even vessels whom you use at will. I came to discover that if God is my father, and I am the clay, he is the porter, then it means that I'm the project of God. And if I am a project of God, a project of somebody can never decide what to do, but the owner of the project will decide with, with what to do with the project. I want you to understand that if you have a project for construction, maybe a house or offices or whatsoever you are constructing, your building will never tell you and demand where to put this or where to put that. It is you to determine how to put pieces together and make them stay where you want them to be. And you are the one who knows how you want the outcome of that particular structure to be. And the same happens to God. If he be your father, you are the clay. He is the porter. Therefore, he has the power to make you into what he wants. What will please him? If your life has not been pleasing, God will allow circumstances. We will allow situations that will bring you to a place where you abase yourself and allow God to be God in your life. So the Bible says God draws near to comfort the broken in heart. He draws near to comfort the broken in heart. Psalm 147 verse 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. In other words, God is closer to the broken heart. The problem is that when you are in the state of brokenness, we don't realize the presence of God is there. We always think we are abandoned. We are neglected by God. We are forgotten by God. I came to remind you that God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. You, like the Apostle Paul, you can make a proclamation and say, Yes, I am troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Yes, I'm perplexed, but not in despair. Yes, I'm persecuted, but not forsaken. I'm cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Christ might be made manifest in our body. Let me say this. I apply colony on my body. And many times, if I have to apply colony, I will have to press and squeeze it in order for the, the, the fragrance that is beautiful, that is smelling so beautifully, must come out. Why do we have to press the perfume in order to get the best out of it? You carry that fragrance in your life. So don't despair and don't lose heart, no matter the circumstances and the situation. It is clear that until you are totally broken and you dead, you can't be a vessel to honor. After laying this foundation on the power of brokenness, I want now to pray for you. You may be sick. You may be going through some disappointment of some kind. You're crying all night. You may be going through a situation of divorce. You may be going through a, a situation of separation or loss of a job or your business isn't doing anything. I've been there. I've experienced that in my life. But I want you to know that if I survive, that same God that caused me to survive will cause you to survive as well. I want to pray for you. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the beloved that are listening to me now. Wherever they are, whatever situation they are in, I pray, Father, that you touch them at the point of need. Heal them that are sick. Restore them from every manner of sickness. I command that sickness to expire in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for healing to begin to take place now in that body. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I pray for that situation of brokenness to be healed. To be bound up by the Lord in the name of Jesus. I pray for your finances. You may be saying your issue is finances. I pray for those finances. May the Lord God who answers prayer answer me now and bring finances into your life. If you do not have anything that you are doing, I pray that the Lord will open a door for a contract for you. The Lord will open an opportunity for you to access resources. And those who have forgotten you will remember you. As I pray now, wherever they are, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to each one of them. And I believe they will call you. I pray that the Lord will meet you at the point of need. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would like to give you an opportunity to receive the Lord. Pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I come before you. I forsake sin. I open my heart. Come in my heart. Start to rule in my life. Beginning now. Make me a new person. In Jesus name. If you have prayed that prayer. You are born again. You have begun a new life. Look for a Bible believing church near you. And start you know, fellowshipping and become a member. And God will bless you. Until we see you next time. It has been a hour of inspiration and encouragement. God bless you and thank you. Thank you.